Tech Insights, the most trusted source of semiconductor analysis and market information. Welcome to this week's VLSI Insider. This is Dan Hutchison. This is Andrea Alate. And this is Jason Apt. So um, one of the things that's really new that's come up in recent weeks is the UCIE, which stands for the Universal Chiplet Interconnect Express. And it's, it's sort of a tag along to the PCI, which really got uh, made it possible to do so much with um, integrating chipsets, but they were still chips. They weren't chiplets, right? We weren't on this polylithic. And, and the biggest problem with that we've had with multi-chip modules or, or multi-chip packages or now chiplets has been that it takes a really big company to pull it off, just like an Apple. And, and I was in this meeting you know, yesterday with all these people and everybody was saying, well, what does uh, um, Tech Insights have to say about it? And I happened to be talking to Jason today and he's got some real interesting things to say about the new M1 Ultra. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Take it away, thanks, Jason. <laughs> yeah. No. Ab- absolutely. So Apple had uh, um, another event uh, just in the last week or so, and uh, I mean they're always fun to watch. Um, the highlight for me certainly was taking a look at their their new Mac Studio. It is a seriously amped up desktop, um, and I mean in terms of sort of whatever horsepower if you want the analog under the hood arguably one of the most powerful, at least from a personal computing standpoint, on the market. So when you kind of crack open the specs, there are there are two versions just from a processor perspective. One is the, uh, the M1 Max chip, which uh, in fact was we saw already back in uh, the fall of 2021. Um, but now there is the opportunity to also get this M1 Ultra. Now, we were, I think, kind of hoping here at Tech Insights that we would see an M2, uh, which we didn't, but that's okay. The M1 Ultra is, is super interesting. Um, and in fact, uh, Apple was kind enough to open it up during the event, at least virtually open it up. Uh, and inside are two M1 Max chips, uh, and they are joined together in, in some way. Uh, and so, of course, this just intrigued all of us here at, at Tech Insights in terms of the architecture. So we, um, you know, we, we took a hard look at all the images that were supplied by Apple during the event, um, but also took a hard look at that M1 Max chip, which of course we already have in, in our labs. Um, and you know, a, a couple of things came out. One is uh, in terms of how the, um, how the multi-chip architecture was, was going, to, going to present itself. And, um, from everything that we can see, it's it's using a silicon bridge based uh, based architecture, uh, not a full substrate. Uh, again, from a reticle size standpoint, it's 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 not uh, it's it's probably not going to going to work that way. It's just probably going to be too big. And and again, just graphically, it looked like it's probably that that silicon bridge using using integrated fan out technology. Um, and and that itself, great. I mean, we're really interested in seeing it. But what really caught me, and to be honest, kind of kicking kicking ourselves a little bit at Tech Insights, when we first looked at that M1 Max chip and taking a look at the, the architecture all the way down to functional blocks, there was a mystery, fairly substantial digital block right along the, the edge of the die. And at that point, we had labeled it as a digital block because we didn't really know what it was for. But now that we have this information and we can see how almost certainly there's a silicon bridge that's connecting these two, uh, two devices, it's probably for actually mating the two. So not from a physical interconnect standpoint, but from a, a, an actual uh, execution, programmatic execution mm-hmm. standpoint. It's all well and good to connect two chips together, but how do you get, it, how do you get chips to work seamlessly that from a system standpoint, it all looks like a single unit, a single processing unit? Again, uh, this came out part of the presentation by Apple that this should work perfectly seamlessly. The operating system will see these two chips as if they were one with lots and lots of cores. When we do some measurements, for example, the, the, the bond pitch 25 microns lines up perfectly with T, TSMC's info approach. Um, this is you know, 90% what we're going to see. Now, we're still looking forward to seeing it 
Unfortunately, it looks like supplies are incredibly limited. Again, going back to supply chain limitations, within hours of this being released on the market, even at the very, very high price, uh, the Mac Studio was completely out of stock. Um, so, so you didn't get one? Pardon me? You didn't get one? <laughs> I don't think we're getting enough to do our full analysis. Okay. So we're going to make do with what we have. And uh, I can't wait to, um, to do a, a follow-up session and tell our listeners all about it. Oh, great. That'll be exciting to see. So uh, uh, the other big thing that came this week was the Intel Silicon Junction, you know, Silicon Epicenter, which was massive, but uh, most of the world saw it as just another fab. <laughs> But it is certainly showing that Intel's had a new, uh, uh, it has a, a new geopolitical post-globalization strategy, which I'm going to be writing about on Friday, but I'm still trying to put that together. But that to me was one of the big ones. And then, you know, always the thing that we always have to talk about is, is any indications of, of is where the business is going? Is there a downturn out there or not? Because that's the biggest question we get these days. And you know, there's some macro indications. What are you seeing at our level, Andrea? Yeah, I mean, the macro for sure, uh, we are seeing some pressures there. And now with the interest rates going higher, I think that we're going to see slowing for sure. Um, other regions like Europe are already experiencing quite a bit of slowing. So there are some shifts there. And then the question is, you know, when does our industry become coupled again with the macro economy, right? Because so mm -hmm. far we've been completely decoupled in the last two years, at least. And... Uh, we're watching the you know semiconductor pricing very carefully and actually in the last couple of, of weeks we've seen prices actually begin to decline however you know there is a lot going on in the world right now so again two weeks don't really doesn't make a trend so we right. look at, at a little bit longer you know time frame so again if we see this uh, weakness persisting for let's say another month then, then yes, we we're going to have a downtrend in, in place. But so far, we're still keeping an eye and seeing what's happening there. But uh, I, I do think that there is still plenty of momentum to have a pretty good year in 2022. Even 23 should be a, a decent year. And then we are viewing 24 really being the, the low point for, for the cycle. Yeah, the only big issue is if there's all kinds of supply chain problems because you've got Ukraine. You've also got COVID in China and that's shutting down factories like at Foxconn and stuff like that. And so that could be a supply, another supply chain hiccup to hold Yeah, it. but then on the other hand, then that's gonna drive more inventory restocking and more buffering because yep, again, people true. make sure they have enough. Yeah, so yeah, so. It will drive sales in my opinion. It's, it's more of what happens with the demand side eventually that we need to have that reset. Yeah, in fact, if anything, what that does is just push demand into the future. Correct. You know, if you can't get it now, you're gonna, you're still gonna buy it. It's just pushed in the future. It's just like everybody's waiting to get cars. And uh, yeah, um, there are used car prices now have fallen though for about um, four or five weeks now. So, so there's a sign there that things are slowing. So. Um, uh, and also uh, container prices have leveled off and have started to slide. So, and then of course, but on the other side, you got the price of oil booming, but that's gone down this week. And then you've got the uh, price of copper, Dr. Copper is uh, going through the roof. So those are just some of the things, but they're, they're at the macro level and, and they, it still has to recouple to our industry, which we've been immune to all that now for the last two years. Definitely, yeah. So, okay, anything else? I think that's it for this week. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks, everybody, for taking the time. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan.